Good morning, everyone. Good morning from Bangkok. I'm kind of talking a little bit softer uh, today. Um, oh, I look like I have a weird animation on the right side for my other mentor group. Uh, let me take that off <laughs> so that you know you're in the right live stream. Hey, Marina, how are you? Where are you from? Let me know uh, where you're from, where you're here. I know we get lots of new people joining live streams all the time. I'm also talking soft because um, one of the fellow unconventionalists, you might know him, Daniel Lim, uh, was, he's from Singapore, but he was actually visiting uh, Bangkok while I'm here. And we ended up, um, well, he ended up actually generously donating a lot of his Marriott uh, hotel reward points and getting us this lovely two-bedroom suite as we're also completing uh, one of the programs that we work on together called the 90-day launch which is that weird image you just saw um, floating around in, in in this video box that I just removed um, but it is our last week for the 90-day launch program so it's kind of nice to celebrate with some real people. We also have Julie from Colorado uh, in this group that's coming here to Bangkok this week. She just landed I think two in the morning last week. So it's going to be so awesome to see people live in Bangkok, which I always really love. Uh, every time I travel on the road, I'm always looking for where you guys are at. Um, in the next sort of few days, I'll be sort of updating you for where I'll be in the next couple weeks as well. Uh, I'll be in Lisbon, Portugal for about a month, a month and a half, and then I'll be in London. So if you guys are in uh, those areas, do let me know because I'm organizing some live meetups when I'm there uh, and hopefully I'll get to hug you and see you in real life as well. All right, so let's get started on today's topic. So uh, this was a topic that was sort of submitted quite frequently uh, in the last few weeks. So usually when I do a live stream, I always ask, what do you want to learn? What would you like me to film about uh, that can really help you in uh, some of the most urgent questions or confusing questions that you may have around uh, creating your own version of freedom, whatever that is, whether it's lifestyle choices uh, or in your career and what you want to do for work. So the topic around how to create a business or how to create a side hustle um, when you are still working full time, this is majority of the people I think that are here. And if, if you're watching this video, I would love for you to let me know on the comments uh, box. Are you currently working full time? Are you have you just freshly quit and are looking for something to um, replace that income? Are you already started your side hustle, but maybe are finding uh, not enough time for it since you're working full time? What is the situation so that when I check back in or if I can get to it in this in this video I'll be sure to help you um, answer some of those questions that you have to make it easier for you to start uh, something on the side so I always truly believe uh, you don't have to quit your job to start a business you don't have to quit your job to start um, looking at ways that you can make a living that's going to be altern alter alternate to what you're doing currently Having a job is not, a, um, to me, a problem. To me, actually, it's a great problem to have, to have a job. Uh, a lot of people don't have jobs. They've been laid off, you know, they, they have trouble finding work. Uh, and their strategy to survive or their strategy to pay the bills will be different. And if you are currently in a full-time job, this is a blessing. This is a great thing that you can continue to do, find ways to be a little bit happier at work. I mean, this is like a whole new other live stream about how to get your mindset right uh, to continue working even though it's not a forever career. But you really need to change your approach or perspective around this job, right? So I've had to do the same when I was transitioning from a job that really took about 60 hours a week out of my 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 my, my life. Uh, it wasn't the most healthiest uh, environment to work in sometimes. But at the end of the day, it was what was funding my side hustle. It was what was allowing me to feel a lot less pressure in starting a side hustle, which can be quite um, helpful because you're not under pressure trying to create something quickly to replace your income uh, when you're just starting out. And, you know, this is the reality of it. And I also get asked this question is how long will it take me to replace my income? And the short answer is we don't know. Um, and that's the reality of what happens when you make this choice is that you have to strategically do it slowly and strategically do it comfortably depending on your risk tolerance and what it is that you um, it individually, you know, all of us have different risk tolerance and different skill sets and what can be easily done, uh, you know, right away versus starting over with certain skill sets. Um, it all varies depending on you. Some people have savings that they've been saving for years. They can take off for a whole year without working. Uh, some people like me, uh, you know, where I have a bit of savings and I decided to move abroad and move elsewhere in order to keep more of my money and not have to, again, jump into the deep end too fast uh, and, and being too much 
too much pressure to financially make that six figures I used to make in corporate. Whatever that is for you, you need to sort of think about what do you have in terms of your um, your your tools, you know, that are available to you that is going to allow you to make this transition better. Um, and sometimes it is about budgeting. Sometimes it is about saving money. And sometimes it is about making more money in your side hustle work in order to feel better about your escape plan, having a bit of a financial budget uh, to be able to do that, you know, without much pressure. So, um, what I believe in is that if you guys have a service-based skill set, so a lot of us here um, work in industries, um, whether you're a lawyer, administrator, uh, project manager, financial accountant, or whatever, you name it, a lot of, of jobs that we currently have are service-based. It means that we make a good living uh, by giving advice, uh, by strategically doing something for other people. Uh, we may be good at managing teams. Whatever it is, is a very service-based way of an exchange right to get that salary and that paycheck and if you guys are in a service-based uh, corp uh, corporate gig or industry at the moment or that's your skill set service base you know web designer graphic designer any of those sorts um, you have an excellent weapon of choice uh, going for you and why I mean by that is that service-based businesses or service-based side hustles or freelancers or consultants um, have the easiest time of starting something quickly. Uh, and that's because you are the talent, you are the asset. Uh, as long as you know what you're doing and you've got some experience in what it is that you choose to uh, pitch out there to make money, you are probably already doing it or you have done it in some capacity that you've been paid to do before. Whether you've been paid by your corporations or organizations that have ever hired you, you can absolutely do it again in the same context uh, with individual customers that you call clients. So don't disregard that you have to start over. Uh, like a lot of people sort of, you know, if you've attended a lot of my webinars, and by the way, I'll put a link in the, in the post uh, after I'm done this live stream on the replay of a webinar I ran about a week ago um, called What Business Should I Start? <laughs> webinar. Uh, and it's basically going to talk a lot about this repurposing of skills um, to allow you to start faster than trying to you know go oh I don't think I'll stay in any of the industries I've ever worked in and start to just look for new business ideas or look for what other people are doing and how can I fit in there and I always never advise that that's the best route of getting into a business idea. I think some of the best business ideas working with hundreds of people in the last few years actually already exists within you. You have particular skills that if combined or you know mixed together or you know uh, merged together can actually create something brand new for you. And if you attend that webinar, I talk a lot about these um, ways of merging skills and merging your passions in order to get you to a sort of unique niche or a unique focus of a direction for work that might actually bring you joy uh, and, and, and will also utilize the best strengths and the most ideal skill sets you already have. So if you're interested in that, I'll click, uh, I'll post the link uh, in the comments as well as the, the, the body of this post so that you can watch that webinar and get real confident about what you have to offer. And there's a workbook as well that's attached to it that will, that will help you. So if you did something of a side hustle according to those guidelines of utilizing your best strengths and your skills, it's, it's much easier to start your side hustle today, right? And so go with things like freelancing or consulting uh, or offering a contract basis to people that you know. And that's an easier way to start because you don't need a website for that. You don't need to think about um, having almost like a brand around it right now because people get really stuck in spending money on branding and websites and all the things that they, shiny things that they see happening out there for other people. But I want to encourage you to say that where you're at right now, especially if you're just in the beginning journey of understanding what your side to hustle should be is that you should be experimenting and you should be testing your skills because another really big question I get is I don't know what I'm good at or I have a lot of things I could be good at but I'm not sure what is really going to be my business or my more permanent uh, freelance career that I'm, I'm striving towards and if that question is in your mind right now, what that tells me is that you need the time to be able to be a bit like a pl to play again, you know, to be a child again and have a bit of a sandbox moment, whether it's 30 days or 60 days that you dedicate to this, where you're testing out things that you are good at. 
So this may have come from your resume. Some people find uh, strengths and skills from something they solved for themselves in their real life. And what I mean by this is like you've never been paid to do it, but you do know how to do it. So I've shared the story before, probably in the live stream that I had a client who was a mother, who was a financial advisor at a bank. She didn't want to work at a bank anymore. But one of the things that she realized after doing my Find My Niche class is uh, a big piece of, of a problem that she knows how to solve that other people don't is from a personal experience she had raising a special needs child, right? And that isn't something she's been paid to do, but she's done a good job for the last eight years having a child for eight years that allowed her to have all this real life knowledge of how to raise a special needs child, combining it with her financial background of helping mothers budget, helping people know what to spend on um, additional teachers or, or tutors or just even the lifestyle that can happen uh, with a special needs child may be more expensive you know, than, 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 than regular parents that just have to pay for school and all that. They don't need to uh, consider all these things. So she combined those two, actually, a personal experience that she knows how to accomplish and then the financial background she's been really built a career around you know and that's an example of, of someone that didn't go straight to the resume to get a great idea is really looking at uh, your life looking at other things that you may have achieved and solved in your life which can actually give you a clue as to what is mean some meaningful work or meaningful direction or focus of your work that you might find quite interesting to pursue uh, pursue as a sort of paid gig even if you've never been done before so experimenting testing is really key into identifying what is that side hustle what is that side business I can start because if you don't know that answer it's really difficult for you to have the motivation uh, to be honest to actually start anything at all um, and please don't look at everybody everyone what everyone else is doing because it may work for them but it may not work for you so the first piece is just being very aware about the types of knowledge and skills and um, uh, skill sets and toolkits, whatever it is that you bring to the table and playing from that, those boundaries of what those things are, because that's what's going to really matter for you. Uh, and that's what's going to get you started in the most sort of easy way. So experimenting is all about that. So the next question you may have is, well, how do I test my skills? What if I think, oh, I think I want to be a writer or I think I'm really good at web design. How do I know which industry to approach? You know, so you're gonna have tons of questions once you have even a vague idea of what direction you might be pursuing. Uh, there's still some gaps to fill in that question. And so my uh, best tip for people who are in that mode of experimentation and needing to know what they're good at, needing to know uh, if they even will enjoy it. They don't want to put all their eggs in one basket, in a sense, until they knew uh, that this work can be for them. And you won't know until you work with another person or a human that could be a representation of this client. So I myself in uh, my business at Screw the Cubicle five years ago, you know, Screw the Cubicle started as a blog. I had a different business at the time in international education. I wasn't enjoying it as much, so I started this blog as a way of you know, writing about my transition and writing about what the hell did I do? You know, it's giving up a secure job. This is what it feels like in your first year of business and really started it as a content sort of for myself, like an online journal. And slowly it sort of picked up traffic and people started out asking me about mentorship, which planted a seed in my head about, wow, people could potentially pay me to help them through their transition, you know? So, I didn't know if I wanted to be a coach. I didn't necessarily love the word coach. I don't know if you guys sometimes, you know, join me here in that, in that, you know, um, it, I got one foot in, one foot out when, with the word coach because there's just so many people that are coaches. I didn't think I was a very traditional coach in that sense. Um, but I wanted to know what that felt like. What I wanted to know what it felt like to help people and would I offer good advice does my advice apply to a lot of people uh, what types of people do I want to work with what type of problems do I really want to help solve and I wouldn't know that from just thinking about it I may have a vague idea but where you know the the real answers are gonna be is is in the doingness you know because the clarity and the confidence of doing something new comes from doing right comes from action clarity always comes from action uh, so what I did for the first two months of um, Screw the Cubicle was to really be offering my services for free. I coached eight guinea pigs in order to see my style of coaching, to see what problems people come for, uh, and see how I manage to help them with it. And the great thing about testing with real humans is you're going to know real quick about what things need to be adjusted, 
how you talk about certain things. Uh, you get to notice a lot more about your style of working and your style of communication with your clients, which parts of your work your client really enjoys. Uh, and all that information and all that insight can be very useful in understanding what you create to sell, you know, an offer. Uh, what services do you create to sell? How do you talk about your work? All that comes from this playtime experimentation uh, plays uh, that you wouldn't be able to find out unless you actually worked with people. Now, maybe you don't take on eight guinea pigs like I do. Maybe you take on your first three test buddies, you know, to go through your work with you and see if you like it. And it's no pressure. You don't have a website done yet. You don't need that. Um, you know, you just, you're, you're really just offering help. Uh, and in exchange, some feedback, some perhaps testimonial, that could be great for when you actually launch a site. But don't let the excuse of not having a brand or an online presence keep you from doing work itself. Okay, that's one of the biggest things that a lot of people um, don't do. You know, they wait for that website to get up. They wait for um, their brand to look amazing and then they start pitching their work. And by that time, they don't even really know how to talk about themselves because they've never worked with anyone and feeling like an imposter, you know, um, putting out their services out there. Well, I get that too. I get imposter syndrome every time I do something new. So the only way you're going to try to eradicate that feeling of um, uh, imposter syndrome is to do the work and prove to yourself that you like the work, that you are willing to do this kind of work and you'll do what it takes to help your customer solve their problems. And you definitely do not have to wait till a website to do this. All right, so then the last question you're going to probably have about that piece of the puzzle after you've you know, decided to experiment with your, your skill sets and help people you know is, where do I find these people? How do I test with people that may not know who I am? So what my advice is, start with low-hanging fruit. And what I mean by low-hanging fruit is all of you have a network. All of you have Facebook friends. All of you belong to Facebook communities. Uh, the unconventionalists, if you are a part of mine, uh, have 2,000 over people in there. There are people around your community online or offline that can actually be great testers for you. Maybe you have a friend. Say, you, say you're a web designer and you have a friend starting a new business and she's struggling with doing her own website. Could you offer your help and go, why don't I help you for the next 30 days? Uh, and I will either coach you or mentor you to build a site if that's where you want to go, teaching, uh, or I will do it for you. And maybe it's a low cost, you know, or it's a friend's mate's rate, uh, or maybe it's no cost because you want to be able to utilize her project almost like a case study. And so you're sort of learning with a real circumstance, right? A real person's business, which I think makes it um, a much more uh, uh, effective uh, learning part if you can actually work on a real project. So pitch to people you know. Pitch to people you see struggling with something that you're like, wow, I, would, I wonder if I would be good at that, helping this person, because I think I know what to do. Go and make that request. Email them. Facebook message them. Call them. Um, get on a call with them, right? Go for coffee with them, whatever it may be. Uh, get out there and do the work. I can't, str I know it sounds super cliche, get out there and do the work, right? Get out there in the field of play. But really the answers is where that is. And a great example of this is just even uh, the cohort I'm running right now at the last week of the 90 day launch. All these people came with no testing. They have a vague business idea. They have never created an offer. They don't even have a brand up there. Nobody knows they exist. And a lot of them have already started connecting uh, with beta testers and, or have ran their beta test. And it doesn't actually take that much um, brain power, in my opinion, to pitch to somebody that you know needs help. That is it. Just be very organic about it. Uh, the biggest thing to really remember is you can go lean and you can go simple. And sometimes the leanest and simplest way of doing something is the most organic thing that doesn't require a social media strategy or, you know, a website up. It requires you to connect with people. It requires you to ask somebody for help. It requires you to look at someone needing help and starting a conversation with them, you know? It's all the things that are very small, but it can be incremental that leads to much more effective solutions for you in order to figure out what side hustle should I start and how do I do this while I'm in a full-time job. Now, in terms of time and effort, you do have to set aside time. Um, and this is why it's really, really good uh, to have mini projects that you're working on, mini milestones that you're 
hoping to achieve rather than having too big of a goal. So if after this live stream, it sort of inspired you to think about some of these questions we talked about today, um, let me know below what is sort of your first major puzzle piece you think you have to move and how can we really focus your attention there instead of a lot of stuff about the future, right? What do you, what's the most confusing thing for you right now? Uh, you know, and make that, um, make that clear for yourself, you know, like if it's about your skills, then your biggest focus is understanding what sorts of strengths and skills I want to pursue, right? That are good for me. So you might be doing that free webinar replay that I told you about and doing that workbook and spending time doing that and nothing else, right? If you already have an idea, maybe it's like, I don't know if it's going to work. I don't know if I'm going to even going to enjoy this job or this work that I'm creating. Um, how do I know, you know, if I'm going to enjoy this work? Well, if you took my advice from this video, go and find test bunnies, right? Go and find your beta testers and start with your low hanging fruit. Focus the next two, three weeks of effort telling people you're good at these things, uh, making those announcements on Facebook, approaching those people that you believe need help that you can really offer a solution for. Just pitch them and do it for free if you need to, because you're starting from scratch again. It's, there's nothing wrong and it's good to be a bit humble at times when we're starting new things is to sort of start from grade one again, you know, going, don't really know what I'm doing, but kind of know, let's give it a shot and see what happens. And you're doing it in a, this sort of safe place of not, you know, still not quit your job. You have a job still. You're really using this time of um, still being full-time employed in order to allow you to feel really comfortable uh, on, on testing right? Certain things that you want to want to accomplish uh, in your career or in your life. So I would love to hear from you. What sort what tip did you hear today that you think you can execute this week? Uh, and what could you focus on that give, gives your attention to um, what it is that's going to move the puzzle piece for yourself versus trying to have too big of a goal that sometimes overwhelms you. And if you comment below this video, I'll always check back in and make sure to give you some advice according to your circumstance. Um, and as uh, promised, I will also give you the link for the webinar replay. I'm just finishing up that uh, blog post actually that allows you to register for the replay and get some really, really juicy content that, that, that really guides you on understanding your skills, be more aware of the strengths that you have, which may not be always your resume uh, and learning how to repurpose all your know-how, your knowledge, and your experience that you've already accomplished and accumulated in your life uh, that can actually be clues to business directions, side hustle directions, freelance directions that could be easy for you to actually start today. And then you can start side hustling while you're still working a full-time job and not give up that security until things are more validated and more confident for you. But really use this time and do that right. Um, and again, doesn't have to be very complicated um, strategies to test with people, right? Like even I knew I knew a woman who was um, a mom who cooks uh, for a batch of kids, right? Like three, two or three kids she has. She's a working mom, and one of the things she did as a beta test was all she did was live stream twice, three times a week of doing her batch cooking. Like on Sundays, she goes grocery shopping, she films herself. She makes all the batch meals plans for her family and freezes them for the week. And as she's cooking, as she's, you know, doing her thing anyway, she's sharing that through a live stream. And that was a really, really simple way to start to tell people what you do without going on something to sell. You know, you're just enrolling people into or engaging people into this interest that you have is around cooking for your family and how to batch it and how to share your advice as you do it. And so 30 days after doing that, um, then she started asking people, hey, you guys have been watching my cooking videos on live stream for the last 30 days. Is anyone interested? Like, are you a mom? Like, do, do you want to learn how to batch cook with your kids and um, make healthy, sustainable meals for the rest of the week? And Lots of people signed up for her first course just from watching her cook in their kitchen because she did the work by communicating with her audience, sharing what she's doing. And then when she had something to sell and had something to offer, nobody was really surprised that this is the, the thing, you know, that's coming up. And because they've gotten such great value from all her free live streams for 30 days, it was a no brainer, you know, to pay her to actually have more focus and more advice coming from her if they joined her cooking group. Right. So these sorts of things, technology is great, you know, use it to its uh, fullest capability. But for you, an attention for you, live streams are great to share your work. Um, you could do a, a live meetup even in your city. Maybe you want to 
get together a bunch of women and help them with their digital presence or you want to help them with writing their first book, whatever it is, have the whole step meetup, go for a walk and talk. Whatever you do is just being around these people and sharing your knowledge. And that's the first step, you know, of getting your work out there. Um, and then, of course, as I mentioned, help somebody, just simply help somebody, you know, that needs help that you go, hey, I'm sort of curious about whether or not I can help this person. And I think I would. Uh, and I think I might enjoy it. I, w I wonder what that means. Go and help that person. You know, you won't know what it means and you won't know uh, if it is a business idea or direction for you unless you really tested it out. Um, so. Tons of stuff we talked about today around, um, you know, going service based as a as a as a first route of choice, because it's easier to sell your expertise of your talents and your advice than building a product, for example, that takes a long, longer time to uh, launch. Uh, we talked about freelancing and consulting uh, being being one of the first places you you start instead of building a big blown business and over pressuring yourself to do a brand and websites go small uh, and go lean uh, and experimenting testing your skills constantly in order to find that path that feels right for you uh, and approaching people in the low hanging fruit community, people you already know, friends of friends, parents, uh, family, relatives, old classmates, old colleagues, all these people exist within you. You don't have to look very far. Um, and I'm sure someone there will um, be more than happy to have you help them with something that you might know how to do. Um, lastly, I'm also going to be um, sharing the webinar replay I to told you about, which is called uh, What Business Should I Start webinar, and it's going to help you break down your skill sets. It'll help you understand the focus of your niche that's meant for you, and not in anybody else. And you'll also have a really great workbook that helps guide you along those steps after you watch that video. So I'll share that with you guys once I get that blog post page up uh, in a few hours, which will be soon. And I'll share it in the comments field as well. And the final thought is that um, a lot of this work of, you know, side hustling while you're working full time, getting your mindset prepared, what should you be working on, how you should be working on it, what should you launch uh, in, in your first business. All these questions are questions that we answer for you uh, at our Bali retreat, which is called your next big thing retreat. You may or may not have heard, heard about it. And if you not, um, you can go into a link that I'm going to share again on the post uh, and you can take a look at some of the videos we shot and some of the testimonials that we shot during the seven day experience together uh, because everybody gets some such amazing benefits from incubating in Bali with me uh, whether there's only 10 of us that really focuses on helping you build a life and business that's outside of the nine to five norm normal uh, and that requires a new set of skills it require when I say skills I don't mean like the stuff that you do your work with but I mean a set of skills like knowing how to find clients online or knowing you know that that websites and uh, having a digital presence will be important in the future and how to use technology to facilitate your services like just like we're doing now you're watching me from wherever you are um, all this can be utilized which with great benefit in uh, giving you remote businesses or remote work uh, that's going to bring you a much bigger freedom of choice in your life. So we talk about all that careers, what business should I start? How do I form my business idea? How do I know it's going to work and really do it in a, um, a community based retreat where you're having a holiday in Bali for a week, as well as you're going to be incubating with 10 people to give you feedback in real time and really help you bypass any self doubt and self belief, uh, negative self belief that, 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 that doesn't you know, get you anywhere when you're by yourself. So doing it with people, growing your business with people, talking about your fears, all that's really, really important to allow you to feel motivated enough to really continue right to go after your dreams so if you're interested in that I'll share a link there as well uh, we're running it for the last time this year which is on November 12th to the 18th uh, and uh, there's a few more spots left we still have the early bird in effect until the end of September uh, but if you are interested in this retreat you want to know if you're a good fit you want to know what happens in the retreat check out the sales page link uh, that I have included and book a call on one of the buttons with me it's a free call I help diagnose where you're at I either way, either way, if you're not a good fit to, to come to the retreat or you can't make it this year, no worries. I'm going to actually be telling you what you should be focusing on anyway. So that free coaching call really is going to help you either way coming to Bali or not put you in the right direction uh, so that you're feeling a lot less overwhelmed and more supported uh, in what you need to do every single week uh, to go towards your business ideas or to even learn how to transition from employee to an entrepreneur. Okay, so check out that link. I'll post it <clears throat> after I go. I end this broadcast, which is now. Um, so thank you again for joining me. And um, I would show you what sort of 
outside my apartment right now. Quite lovely because there's like pools and things. But yeah, it's, you know, it's, it's concrete jungle. It's, it's lovely, it's chaotic, um, it's different from Bali, definitely for me. You didn't hear the roosters today, but I love traveling and I love meeting people while I'm traveling. So it's, I've been blessed to um, be having uh, Danny, as I mentioned, from the Unconventionalist meet me here in Bangkok and then Julie's coming as well today. Um, and I'll be on the road again. I'll give you guys a, uh, another update. Uh, if you are in Lisbon or based in Lisbon or based in London, I'll be coming to you in the next few months. I would love to meet you in person uh, and maybe we can um, stream actually together. That would be cool. And as usual, after every live stream, I like to ask, um, you know, what's the most important thing that you learned in this live stream? What would you love more about? What would you love to learn more about that, that maybe links to this topic that I can help uh, create, create more advice or content for you uh, for future live streams? That really helps me out and it gives you what you need. Okay, thanks again for joining me. I will see you later uh, and hopefully probably from Lisbon the next time that you'll see me. Bye.